Right. Oh, Chris, Chris has got that. We're good. Sorry, was that my right? We're fucking recording. Look. Uh, no, I don't know. Man. Uh, you're recording you that way. Is that? Is that what? That's aye, aye, you're on this free. Else. It's confusing, man. I don't. Oh, I free. Right, See, I'm usually it's looking at you. You're where my camera usually is, John. <laughs> I know. I'm still playing with angles. Last time we had a guest, your camera was over there. I'm just seeing. Well, oh, I'm trying to get my good side of the line. Fairly find it. That's how you. Eight episodes in, we've no find it. Don't find it. Fuck you. Right. Uh, we started. I. I'm a little. I have a good. Are we? Gordon. Gordon. Right, so I because we don't really start, John. There's not really a start. Right. It just kind of no. We, we naturally flow in, and we don't. We flow it. in. No, I was just before, like you now you're saying, you're trying to find my good side. Yes. Somebody said, seen restaurants, John. Aye, seen restaurants. Apparently, um, I'll introduce you in a minute. Right? Apart, <laughs> apparently, um, what in restaurants, what they do is, but now when they give you a seat, aye, they put you like they put the good looking people at the Wendy's, right, to attract new customers. It's not a bad. I know. Tactic, I, 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 was, I was on Facebook the other day and I was like, I'm fucking getting something to eat. I was like, why? That's not true. How come I'm in the fucking basement in this place? <laughs> getting anyway, smacked by the toilet door and everything. <laughs> and the disabled toilet eating my dinner. <laughs> right, so what episode is this, Chris? Number eight, I believe. This is episode eight, John. And, and like, like John McElhinney, you're only our second guest because we're fannies. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. So this week, uh, Chris, we've got John McAlinden. Do you know of John McAlinden? We've not met in person, but we have shared a few bills in our time. Have Aye, you? Yeah, I've I thought played, you looked uh, familiar, Chris. I've played Butte Fest a couple of times Aye. and you were there. We're um, playing there again this year. Aye. Aye. I've not, well, I might wangle my way in somehow. I've not Aye. thinged it yet. My girlfriend's playing with another band. Uh, what band? Uh, Sonny Leto. don't know if you know. Ah, yeah. How do you know Sonny? Uh, she plays with them, so they're definitely playing it this year. Aye. But we have a wee duo, which we know a couple of people that run stages there, what, so we're what maybe going to try. called? The Fallen Hearts. Right. Oh. Uh, so we did Butte Fest 2018. Aye. Which I think Aye. is actually one of the only ones you didn't. <laughs> I think. Uh, I played 2017. Oh, I that. that was the year we were in jail, John, was it? Wait, I, <laughs> I was in Bangkok. Uh, <laughs> I was up. Uh, we played because Belladrum clashes with Butte ah, Fest, okay, so. Aye. I we I think we'd done one year where we played both of them and it was quite difficult to aye, get for one to the other, but we are doing that again this year. Aye, fair enough. Uh, um, just because we, we love Butte Fest, it'll be good to it get It is good. I've and... been three times, I think. I played it in 2017 uh, with another mate, Connor Ferrioli. Right. So um, you, you've done quite a few festival gigs as well, Chris? Pretty much this only those ones. Like a, music, a music podcast and I'll be sitting here like... We'll just talk amongst <laughs> ourselves. Aye, you can sit there. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, I've only done... Butte Fest, I think, in terms Aye. of festivals. Because I think you, you, you were at the, the Wicker Man Festival years ago, weren't you? That's I didn't right. really Aye. know you then. Aye. And Because uh, I remember before, you were on, uh, maybe before, because it was a poetry, you were on the same tent as us. Right. It was a poetry spoken That's word right. tent. Aye, aye. Aye, we done, we played twice that year. There's a video, actually, of the two gigs, but we done the Solas tent. Right. It's Che Woodman that runs that, and then we rushed along to the spoken word tent. Aye, aye, aye. the wee tent. That was a great aye, wee tent. I loved that. Aye. aye, so we done two diff- completely different sets, On the which same was night? good. Just aye, aye. within about two hours of each other. Aye, okay. but that was the very last. Uh, what's it called again? Wicker Man. Wicker Man. That was the very last one. Aye, that was sad. I loved that. I done that maybe five or six times. Aye, there's talk of it coming back, but Is there? Eden, Is there? Eden's good, but I'm trying to think of what other fe- festivals do comedy. There's Belladrum's got Aye. a really good comedy Aye. tent. I think they used to there's do, uh, Rock Ness used to have comedy, I think. Aye. There's a few guys who knew done that, but I've never, never done it. Um, I've also seen a few murmurs of tea in the park making a return. Nah, that was uh, no? just uh, somebody to fit up. Uh, set up a fake oh, right. account. <laughs> I, never, I never looked at that. Aye, gullible Aye. bastard. There we go, I've been fake newsed. Aye. Uh, I think DF came out and made a statement last week, so it's oh, definitely not happening. Ah oh, well, uh, it's Transmat makes too much money without having to deal with uh, thousands of wins getting mad to it all yeah. weekend. Aye, uh, because and then a few, a few dying every year as uh, well. Uh, so. Transmat, they've not got the camping and all that now, have they? Nah, nah, it's so just that- suits, suits the kind of I suppose they're it's easier for people to kind of get about and Aye. Out, it's the same in Glasgow, so it's dead Aye. easy to get to. Isn't it? Did you ever go to tea in the park? No. No, it's one of these things that I can uh, just never get around there. I think it was just the crowd that mates I went about with, none of them were really into Aye. stuff like that. It used to be there'd be like Moody's Burn Hill. We're obviously both in Moody's Burn, Aye, so... Aye, Aye. Uh, I was on the quimp and all that. Every year. <laughs> Aye, but it was everybody, like folk folk that you loved and hated for, for some reason. <laughs> people that you would walk by in the street without saying hello, but somehow 
We all just congregated. Aye, aye. Aye. Team Those were full of Ekkies probably well, at the time. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we both got different stories of how we met each other, John. Aye, apparently. So I'll introduce them first though. Right, so, okay. right, aye, sorry. so this is episode eight. So this is how this podcast goes. It's like we wait right. halfway through before we introduce the episode. Aye, but it's like six it. minutes, so we'll start now. Aye. <laughs> so this is episode eight. There's not really any, any editing. Uh, episode yeah. eight, we've got John McAlinden from Colonel Mustard in the Dijon, Dijon 5. I say that right? Aye, just and about. It, aye, and uh, <laughs> so for, for Moody's Bun, so this is a... So it's like a music... So you two are the music people. Aye. But we two, us two are the... Um, bun lads. The Moody's Bun one. So it might be a, a mixture <laughs> between Moody's Bun and music. Fair enough. And then we could talk about comedy as well. Because you're going to organise a festival in Moody's Bun. Fucking right, man. Down the, park, <laughs> down the Fitma Park. Aye. <laughs> Dingart Ferry. That's it, oh, aye. Only that slant that it's on. It pro- aye. Probably need to put the stage at the top. Aye. Right, so 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 John, you've always been from Moody's Burn, John, haven't you? No, I uh, was born in Gartkosh, moved so to... So was I! Were you? Aye. We, there will need to be statues of us when, when we pass like, at the train station, <laughs> just Aye. for all the polis that come in to see. So I was born there, but it was six months, the, uh, we, I moved to Moody's Burn when I was six months old. Right. No myself, I didn't move out, I didn't Aye. go fuck this. Packed your bags. I was ah, my man, Gartkosh is pissed. <laughs> I think I was outside toilets and shit. Aye. Well, I, I moved when I was about five to Muirhead, and then when I was a teenager, I moved to Moody's. Oh, Burn, see, that was an interloper then, aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Some, somehow I was accepted, aye. eventually. Aye. Got I a few know. black eyes before ah, I was hey, properly you got, accepted, you got, you got, a, a broken nose. That's but, how it works, isn't it? <laughs> aye. But I'm now, I, I feel, I'm, when people ask, even though I stay in Deniston now, uh, if people ask... Really, I just lived in, you lived in Moody's Burn for two weeks. Aye. Yeah, it sounds like that. <laughs> Mo- moved out when I was 21. Aye. Uh, but no, nah, if folk ask me where I'm from, I'd probably I'd go between St. Moody's Burn or Deniston. Right. Uh, I still, Moody's Burn still feels like home. Aye. My mum's still there and still loads of pals. And, aye. Uh, but aye, it's, it's, it's on the up, Moody's Burn, isn't it? It's looking a is bit it? nicer than is it was, aye. Is that the new Deniston? Aye. <laughs> Deniston's <laughs> Merchant City East. <laughs> aye. Uh, How's it on the up, though? You, you actually see uh, different types of people instead of right. lots of the same type of people. Ah, I, I suppose there's, it's like there's more diversity. Aye, I suppose it's getting bigger, isn't it? Like every aye. time, like if you're out of Moody's World for a few weeks, you, you come in, there's a new scheme built. Oh, yeah, so there's like a fucking hell, there's a, a, like a double Moody's burn. Do you want to be drive round a new scheme round where the Stone Yetis used to be? I saw that. And aye. I was like, what the fuck? That's just a big brand new scheme. Aye. Uh, apparently, I'd heard a rumour they, they dug up loads of bones and stuff like that fuck. up there. I don't know if it's Shit. true or not. Shit, that's me caught oh. for my, <laughs> my early serial killer days. Well, Shit. Well, g- given that was a, a psychiatric unit, I wonder if they, they just had burials out there or what. Really? I, 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 I don't know. Aye. It might just be a rumour, but I, I heard that. Let's while, fucking get the rumour going. As that. they were excavating, aye. aye. Between that and probably like a load of Roman soldiers or something. Aye. Could have been, aye. Did you get aye. them all around here? Might have been. Sorry, can I make a producer request and aye, bring, aye, aye. bring your mic in a wee bit? All right. Oh, sorry, 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 boss. <laughs> See, the, power, the power's getting to you, Chris, ordered me about. It's just going to annoy me when I'm editing. Ah, that's fine. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? That's ideal, thank you. I'm going to like it. <laughs> I'll need to mark that. That's always your mic. <laughs> right. So, so right, up. Um, what was I going to ask you there? So, so apparently, right, right, I've, right I, I've known you for years, but I didn't really know you for the early days of Moody's Burn. Nah. And uh, I we've, we've discussed in the car, Chris, because we're waiting you, because you, Chris was dead a shite when we were trying to get in the door. <laughs> I, wasn't, I was building this magic. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris was dead something, or having a chug or something, and, uh, <laughs> and we were trapped the door for about three hours trying to get in. It was about five minutes, and I was saying to you, like, uh, where I thought I first came out, new... New Year, and I thought it was on a mega bus coming back back from Edinburgh. Maybe I don't know. What you reckon? I I've, I definitely met you before that, right? And it was you, you, and I think Paul Hardy, right? Maybe one other or a couple of other guys appeared. This is Moody's bunch celebrities for I, you. <laughs> and it was a party, and it was about must have been 
It was after midnight anyway, and we we been there. Party or party some no. I don't think it was, uh, but it was Claire Claire Dixon, who was my friend Roddy's big sister. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and is Roddy in your band? Or? Aye, Rod, aye, aye. Rod, Roddy, he's my brother-in-law as well. Aye. Uh, but I, he he plays percussion and Colonel Mustard, and still aye. does his Zambia Bamba stuff. Aye, but, that's right, aye. but aye, it must have been. I think it, it seemed like it was one of these three, four in the morning that these slightly older not that much older guys came in and you know in Moody's burn you're lit are, oh, they, no. are these guys bams or are they alright was that one of the older ones you were one of the I older ones I'm not that much older am I yeah, a, few, a few years, few years older right. <laughs> uh, and you were you were brand new and you were was hilarious that? you were just kind of right into oh do you know making us laugh and everybody was steaming but all I right. just remember going this guy's a funny guy and I can't remember you that's but but uh, you you had that glazed you wouldn't you wouldn't remember it because you had that glazed steaming oh, hey. <laughs> so, vibe. So whose party? Where, where was it? Who's, who's was I it? I think it was in Bridgeburn. Bridgeburn. But I don't think it was Paul's flat. I was it Eddie Cl- McMenamin's party? Maybe. Nah, I think it was. I think Claire. Claire Dixon, I think maybe. Claire might have stayed there briefly. It was right. definitely Claire's, but wherever right. it was. Woody's Burn listeners are going to be loving all these oh, names. Oh, this is going to be the biggest thing that's ever happened. Woody's Burn. I've actually got. Uh, I was checking. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right, mate. I was checking the stats of like who's been listening to the podcast. All right. Two episodes out now. We've got. Uh, is four. this is this the the listening the kind of Spotify stuff? Uh, it's all all the audio platforms, so everything apart for YouTube. All right. So we've got uh, three in America and four in Canada, and like twenty odd in the UK. Fuck it, hell. Now oh. one, my cousin who lives in Canada, messaged me this morning, and he was like, "Listen, to episode one, that was really good." So right. I, I, he's one of them in Canada, but there's another four downloads. So I don't know if he's told people or if there's just other randoms in Fuck Canada. Fuck it, hell. This is wet. This is world, worldwide. So shout out, shout out to Canada. Uh, shout out to Callum and also. Uh, Everyone in Moody's Bond that's going to enjoy this. It's probably <laughs> the, the Canadians will be loving this Moody's Bond chat. Like, just talking about Bridge Bond Drive. Aye, 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 aye. aye, It's probably 20 people from Moody's Bond. No, you, you probably got a few if you come on the old. Aye. aye uh, well, to be fair, I, I actually listened to it 20 times last week, so it was me. Oh, so it's just you. <laughs> it's just me, aye, aye. That's the 20 UK listeners. Aye, yeah. aye. But it builds, man, it builds. So I thought that I bet you, John, uh, was... Maybe it wasn't even you. <laughs> I'm sure. Like, I mean, I was on the mega bus. Mega bus rings a bell. So I, I was in Edinburgh. It was like the three o'clock mega bus. Have you ever been on the three o'clock in the morning mega bus, Chris? I don't actually know if I've ever been on any mega bus. Oh man, I've, yeah, had, a shel- I've had a sheltered up bringing. You need to go yourself on the mega bus at <laughs> three in the morning. You need to do a London mega oh, bus. Oh, I've no lived. The big picture of Dara O'Brien on the back. Of it. Uh, <laughs> aye. Aye. The London mega bus, I've been on that a few times. Holy shit! Done the uh, one day. the Manchester one, I think. Aye. Uh, so, so what? Well, I think it was you. Like I was in the bus. I was probably gig either a gig or a night out or something. Like that, but it was three in the morning, and pissed as fuck as you are on the mega bus, just sitting with your stick to your kebab on that you weren't meant to be allowed on the bus. You, you, cut, <laughs> you put it in your pocket. Or you put your kebab pocket in your pocket. Kebab. Aye. And you go. I, I've not got any food driver on my ticket. <laughs> You go on the bus, then you go up the back, eat your kebab. And I'm sure you were on your band or some of them. Cause Probably will be, man. Aye. And you just started singing in the bus. Do you have any recollection of any songs? Fuck, oh, no. <laughs> I, I, no, I can't remember. But, but I remember I'm, having a sing song a, a few times on the way home for Edinburgh. Aye. So aye, it's probably been one of them. So uh, you were singing, but like 90% of the bus were up for it. Mm-hmm. There was a couple of people moaning their head off. Aye. But we just... They should, they, they should have just stayed in Edinburgh. Aye, That's quite aye. clearly where they deserve to live. I know. <laughs> and I think when you were singing, I, think, I ended up chatting to you. You said to me, I know you. Or, or, I can't remember what happened. And, right. I will. Or, there was a vague, vague memory that, that, I, that I met you in a bus. Pissed. So that was our second encounter. Uh, I don't know. There might be more. And then there was a jail. Yeah. <laughs> there was a jail. The I still owe you these cigarettes, John, for what you've done for me. So... Not at all, man. <laughs> I said, bum boys need to look out for each other. <laughs> right, that's, I guess why, though. So, the part there was a party. I, I, I was kind of, uh, when you said there was a party years ago, I was waiting, you saying I made a complete cunt of myself, but I didn't. Uh, you might have done, <laughs> but uh, I just remember you were like, just, just funny. Just, you funny. know, make, they're making people, I actually still do it to this day, just they're making people laugh, giving folk a, a good time. All right, there you go. Was it busy? 
Was it nah, a good gig? Nah. Had I started comedy then? No, nah, nah, I don't think you had. Cause, there must have been the early 20s then. Because I think it was years later, uh, Paul had uh, said to me about you doing comedy. And I was right. like, oh, cool. And I came and saw you playing in the Griffin back in the day. Fucking hell, that must be a long time ago. Aye. Uh, and you were doing your sort of mind mapping type stuff. All oh, right, the memory shit. Did I do that in there? Aye. Aye. Aye, so that's, I think that's, I think that might be the only time I've seen you live. I probably should have well, made well, more, of, more of an effort. When, Chris when, has been more times than you. When, you're, you're like, Chris when, is the when only was the last Colonel Mustard gig you came to? Anyway, so, <laughs> aye, 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 aye. Good point, mate, good point. It's it's like different it. worlds, but it's good when they, they combine. Aye, be, aye, good, aye. be good to get you on doing something, well, I'm sure. Aye, cause I've done a couple of gigs with you in Edinburgh and stuff. That's right. The, this has been good fun. The Moda Apartments that that's still never been broadcast. Aye, what was that again? Remind me what that was. Uh, I was, was that the, 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 the gig the year just after lockdown when there was hardly anybody there? I think it was... No, I think it, it, was one I, after it, might, it might have been. I think it was two years ago. Uh, in, aye, 21, that was like a sort of aye, mini fringe. Then it wasn't like a full proper... Aye, and mm, there was still so, some stuff happening, but... A pal who we'd done stuff, we'd done like a Burns night. It's aye. these kind of fancy apartments in Edinburgh, they're lovely, uh, but cost a fortune. Oh, fuck and, I, man. Uh, and one of the guys that kind of runs the sort of entertainment thing, they're, they're sort of modus operandi. It's meant to be everything is on tap in the flat and your accommodation, aye. or you know, entertainment, there's you know, comedy nights, music, and so I think they were hoping to do a sort of Edinburgh Fringe type thing, but because we didn't have an audience, I think that's why they I, might have looked at it and went, "Oh." Mm. And they did it all. They videoed it all, didn't they? Aye. So they had me doing stand up just in front of a camera, right? With them kind of off to the side. Aye. I thought I thought it was good enough that it'd Aye. be good if they broadcast it, but because they didn't play it last year, I'm like, "Oh well, we'll probably never see the light." Maybe, of day. Did but, we kill it then? <laughs> well, we still got paid. Ah, so we did. Uh, did we? Did Aye. we? Aye. Aye. Aye, well, no, no, you. <laughs> Aye, you did. No, I probably I don't know. I trust you, Don. He's <laughs> cunt, he's cunt, but he's bad. <laughs> That's the only reason I brought, brought you here for the podcast, John. Because uh, like you still owe me money for that. So can I shut the door? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Get your cab reader with you. Bar, <laughs> bar bar fight. Aye, aye. So, um, so your Colonel Mustard thing, right? So we'll talk about that, right? Right. So how did how did that start? How did, well, how did you start on your music? So I think then uh, your whole music career it, it did start in Moody's Burn uh, so Roddy that we, we spoke about earlier Roddy, aye, aye. Uh, he used to play the guitar we'd hang about just just at Gart Ferry and then <coughs> get the guitar out and sometimes the police would move us on so we'd go down to what, you mean outside? Stony XI alright so we used to play like Oasis and Blur the Beatles so is this just up your mates having <laughs> a baby just a, just a sing song Nirvana Smashing Pumpkins and then we'd go down to Stony X and uh, it'd be just I brilliant, you know, do an all nighter or stay out quite aye. late anyway. Just everybody just all singing, uh, right? And I think out of uh, uh, the singers, Roddy and Big Craig, who still plays drums with Colonel Mustard. Who's that, Craig? Big Big Mowgli, Big Craig Ross. I don't know. Animal. Uh, he's he used to stay in Truro. Right. Big guy. Look, he, had, he got a haircut once and it made him look like Mowgli for the Jungle Book, so he still gets called Mowgli. I wanted the nicknames at Landry, aye. Yeah, aye. Uh, that's why he's, he's got the long hair, and I used to always slag him for his long hair, and now I've aye, got, got it. So let's see it, Don, let's see it. Your ponytail there, is it aye. behind that? Aye. aye, it's there. It's aye, there. Aye. Uh, That's my hair, so you're doing better than me, man. <laughs> Uh, but I so they used to rehearse down in their uh, studio or their studio Craig's mum and dad's garage that's a studio <laughs> isn't it this is Chrissy's garage isn't it so, aye, true yeah, you could say that stock studio <laughs> and uh, Roddy's uh, Roddy'd have a big amp Craig had his drum kit set up aye. and they'd be blasting it out but there was no mic so I'd be singing into like a pair of headphones aye, aye. and then uh Linton and Paul's brother Stevie, they Paul Linton. Aye, 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 aye. They they went into Glasgow and they were they were out and about. We were probably I think we were still underage at this time. I think we were maybe sixteen, seventeen. And but they got us a gig in the Vale. Uh, just oh, up. is that the one next to the Queen, Queen Street. Street Station? Aye. So that was our first gig, and I was uh, there. Aye. aye, and it was me and Tosh. I don't know if you know Tosh, but he's he's a I good singer so. as well. This is and, the Tosh. 
Uh, James Walsh. Nah, you'll, you'll I know the name, but uh, you'll know what they say. Uh, Tosh is really funny uh, and really good good singer and musician as well. So uh, out, of, out of all the guys that were singing, I think they sort of identified us two as the guys that they wanted to maybe try and do some stuff Aye, with. the leads. Aye, so we went up and we'd done a couple of gigs at uh, the Vale. So we done, we played just cover versions, like Aye. Oasis Talk Tonight and Smashing Pumpkins, Cherub Rock and... Can't mind if we had any originals at that point. I don't think we did. Aye. But after that, uh, I we we just sort of went. Well, we'll form a band, and then Aye. one of our pals, brothers KJ, he played guitar, and we went up and all oh, these nicknames have got KJ, Bobby. <laughs> so I started writing. Uh, Aye. Really terrible. Do you know? I look back. I've still got all my Aye. original songs. I, I was up my mum's loft the other day. And they're all still in a folder. But aye, and they shine it. Aye, they're terrible. Oh, man. But I've some, some of it is quite nice. And like, I don't know. I suppose that it's a magical age, that age. So like, I, I'll always hang on to it. And aye. you go for being embarrassed to go, and actually, that's quite a good lyric that I might not think might, of I now. Because you might trigger something. I was going to say, is it anything you've maybe like looked at and think you could revisit and turn it into something now with kind of fresh eyes? Potentially, I'd I'd love just to record all of these songs one day, Aye. even just acoustically with Aye. Roddy and maybe Big Craig doing Aye. something. But have you get stuff like that with jokes that you've written Aye, years so ago, and then you I, go back and find them? I've got a big pile. Like I I I did a clear out a few months ago, right? Aye. And see in my living room, I've got a big pile, like old notes. It's Aye. just most of, a lot of it repeated, but it's all shite. It's my very early stuff. Aye. So I'm in the process now going through a notebook at a time and and write. So I can write out headlines. Or kind of bullet points. Yeah. So I go through all these notebooks and write me bullet points and throw them. Start to throw them all away. Aye. So I can condense all in like a couple of notebooks. Because a lot of it's just repeated scribbles. Because a lot of the time I write the same stuff again just because it's in my brain. Aye. So so some of it, some of it is terrible. But I used to do stuff about masturbating over Maggie Brown for the Bruins and all that. It's just, <laughs> So one of my first bits is, is it was like. Uh, like I used to masturbate over Maggie Brown for the Bruins and I, what I would do I'd flick through the pages to make it look as if she was moving <laughs> she's, she's, that's, uh, it's funny now but I don't know but then she kept turning into Daphne so it didn't work so it was a, I don't know so that was really my first bit <laughs> Aye. Got to start somewhere. I know. I know. Well, I know my first. That's ever... the first time anybody's ever laughed at that. But well, there you go. It works. <laughs> it. It's your timing. <laughs> uh, maybe it was my maybe it was my my, my, my comedy timing or that. Was shite back then. Might have been. Maybe it's the fact you were actually doing it on stage while you were saying it. That was the problem. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> we had that gig. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, well, like, the first song I ever wrote was called "Walking and Talking." Aye. And it was about me and my mate Bob Fair Service walking up to Cole Mountain out at Kirk and Tillich one night. Cole and, Mountain, is that? Uh, see, when you're. Oh, in, the big cold aye, thing. Aye, oh, yeah, I know you are. Aye, aye, the big, so yeah. we walked out there and just had a night where we were just kind of out, out of trees, shall we say. Oh, and and drugs a, or what? Well, can I kind of delve too deep aye, into in my past life, can <laughs> I? Aye. Uh, but aye, we had a good good night, but that, that was the first ever song I wrote and I took that to Roddy aye. and we went and recorded that uh, at a studio in Busby. Right. They're still there, Riverside Studios. Riverside. And then, Africa, that was good, they recorded aye. it. Johnny and Duncan. It's like East Coast Bradway, you know? Oh, right, aye. Aye, aye, aye. It was all dat tape, so it was like really like, do you know, aye, the aye. real. And... So the, the big room upstairs, like uh, the full floor. I can't mind if it was, I think it would have probably been it's... the smaller room just with our budget aye, at right. that time. Because it's cause like we a we kind of college one. now, isn't it? They've got um, the band I was in in high school, we entered a competition there. Uh, and we, there's like however many bands entered, there's like rehearsal rooms down the stairs, aye. maybe four or something. Everyone goes in there and you've got like, I think maybe two or three weeks of three hour sessions to like write a song. Aye. And then somebody for the college basically came round judging everyone. Yeah. And the winner Judgy got... Judgy bastards. Aye. But then the winner got uh, to come and record two songs upstairs in the main studio and we won it. All that, right. That, that would have felt like pure making it at the time. It did. That, and then we recorded amazing. it and broke up before we ever done anything with the songs. So. Aye, <laughs> bastards. It's the age old story. Aye. So. Aye. Uh, so, but that was a really good studio. Aye. Um, so that's, so, that's where we first recorded. But then we just... We we formed a band called Sonus, right? Uh, and it was me, Roddy, Big Craig, we Andy Cardigan that you might know, and KJ. Uh, and for years, that was the band where it was kind of indie Britpop era. Aye. 
So there was definitely an influence of that. I was swaggering about Moody's Burn with Adidas and all that, aye. with the, the mop top. Aye. Uh, my the people ha- going, who's that guy? Aye, my halcyon <laughs> days. Uh, but aye, that, that was good times, but it was probably too influenced by other stuff. Aye, aye, but aye, aye. that was definitely, it was good because we used to go in and rehearse in the Barrowlands downstairs in the Barras, right. like three times a week easy. And that's that's work rate that we put in there is kind of, probably why we got to a certain point of being good enough Aye. to but then from there uh, I think Big Craig had went down to Jersey and it was like heartbreaking at the time Aye. I remember at the time I'm actually going in to do a lecture in UWS on uh, Wednesday about music and mental health All down right. in there and I'm writing a wee bit about this the now but I remember at the time everything's so life and death and Aye. just to be able to have a word with yourself at that age and go Aye. look so, it'll, so, it'll be okay like it's you know bands will break up and Aye. it's something so describe that then because that's quite interesting because this uh, thing's called the fuck it list it's kind of a we talk about stuff like that don't we Aye. Uh, sometimes I like mental health stuff's a good thing to chat about. So yeah. what, what was going on then? Were you were you I was I your ass about it? Just well, Big Craig's moving to Jersey, and you're just like you're thinking, oh God, like this is you know, aye. we've got something special here, and aye. it's it's the thing that sort of because some of some of our pals got into harder drugs and stuff like right, that at right, that age. Aye. And our saviour, I think, was going the into the studio, and for other people, it was other things and. Uh, but definitely music at that point was the thing where no matter what madness was going on in Moody's Burn, you, you were going into a studio aye, and you aye, were, aye. you know, making music. So is there music a and, a wee bit kind aye, of thing, or kind of therapy? And your passion as well. Aye, aye. So, so when he moved, it was like, oh God, like how, what, do you know, this thing we've built up? But aye. we hadn't really ever done anything at Snow's. We didn't release anything. Aye. We didn't, do you know, we played, I mean, we you, played you King the... Touch, which was, Brilliant, at aye. that time, that was like, oh, Oasis play yeah, yeah, yeah. still kind of is to this day aye, if you aye. say you're playing either the Barras or King Tuts and folk think, think that you know you're that a superstar was, but you do uh, the Barras quite often don't you once aye. a year or something don't you no every least. year we've, we've played it five times now ah, that's uh, phenomenal, but that was the dream because we used to rehearse downstairs in there when we were like you know 16 onwards up to our mid 20s uh, they used to have the rehearsal and you would we used to sneak upstairs to gigs sneaked up to see like the charlatans and primary uh, screen sneak and, in aye and I'd maybe have a ticket for the next night but so it meant you were getting all this band education as well aye. but we, we loved it in there so that was always the dream like aye do you know it'd be making because the, the noise would shake through the whole building aye. and it would be like other bands didn't like rehearsing when a gig was on, but we did because we were thinking. I see when rehearsing when the gig aye, was on. We we wanted to get up there, but if you booked a six to nine at nine o'clock or just before it, you'd be like some of the guys would be going home and you'd just sneak upstairs uh, and get aye. chased off the janitors <laughs> like a wee old aye. couple that you used aye, to chase aye, after. Fuck you. off, good aye. Aye. Uh, so that that was definitely the dream and it it took us about twenty years to do it. Really? But, aye. So but, when did you do your first? Barrowlands gig then? I think it was it was either 2014 or... Was it? Was uh, that, uh, it might have been 2016. 2014, I think it was. So how did that come about then? Did you just build up a big enough following? They thought... Aye, well, it was a guy, uh, Tony Goggin, who he does the, the band The Ramoners, like Ramones. Right, yeah, I've heard but the name, aye, aye. Tony's just a guy that's done loads for loads of bands and he runs Blitzkrieg Records just down at the right, Barris right. Uh, market. Uh, shout out to Tony, but uh, Tony, Tony, but he he liked us. He saw something in us, and Aye. he'd even gave like Alabama Three, uh, who are one of our you know favorite bands, and since then one of the guys Rob for Alabama Three sang on one of our songs, right? Country as fuck, right? Uh, which is the the vinyl version. Country as muck if it's on Spotify, kids. Aye. <laughs> uh, but I so he he really pushed us. Do you know, and uh, this opportunity came up, and it was a charity gig to start with. Uh, and but we we were like, this is it, this aye, is the aye, dream, aye. and it might have been the only time. So we just made the most of it and got everybody. So was it just Jews that were performing the whole no, night? There, there, was, there, was, a, there was a few. Uh, there was a few bands that night, and aye. then again a couple of years later, we done Yellowlands, which we done that for the Cluther Trust. But that was right. that was probably more at the point where 
we had made a name for ourselves aye, aye. and at that point we're probably the biggest unsigned band in Glasgow, aye, at least aye. if not Scotland, and we had a good fan base and aye. do you know, it it really felt like we are this is happening, do you aye. know? All the things that I kinda gave up on, because by that point I think I think I must have been in my early thirties and sort of went, Well, you're not gonna get a record deal if you're over thirty, but I want to be playing festivals and as soon, as soon as I sort of gave up on that Aye. it actually do you know good things started happening maybe not some of the dreams you had but better things like establishing yourself Aye. as a festival band and we've talked about that a few times on Aye. this about not having not just striving for one end goal but just enjoying Aye. the journey along the Aye. way do you know what Aye, I mean as I said you might not you might not reach that hang at the end and that's fine but that's it's, not what it's about it's about Aye. enjoying it as it's happening Aye, Aye. That, that's a line and uh, one of my songs it's all, it's all about the mission it, uh, sorry it's not about the mission it's all about the journey oh fuck yeah. aye man uh, we've said that a number of times oh totally aye, aye. And, uh, and it's like, like even doing this I love doing this aye we're it's, not doing this to like try and get a million pound Joe Rogan deal with Spotify aye, we're doing aye, this because we aye. enjoy aye. sitting about chatting. aye talking shit and it's like, see, like see, right, I, I get that with gigs a lot right because I've been doing gigs for like fucking 20 odd year or something like that I don't know if that's longer than you've been going I well, well, I've been probably longer than that. Aye, 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 aye. aye. since sixteen, and do you know I but twenty. So what is you, John? Forty-five. Right, aye, so I'm fifty. Right, so, so, so and it's like, uh, and you get people can uh, and I don't know if they say it's snidey sometimes. Like you, you still, you ever get that? You still doing that comedy thing? People, do, people have never been to a gig. They say, are you still doing that comedy? Can I give you that? You know, aye. You get, you see the eyes, you see it, you go. Like, are you fucking mad? And I went, well, do you think you'll ever make it? As if, do you think you'll ever, well, what's the point of doing it if you're no made it? And Aye. I'm like, well, I do what I love hun- over 100 times a year, uh-huh. probably 120, like 100 and odd times a year, I get to do something I fucking love mm. that, that I wanted to do as a kid. Aye. And I still think I'll get bigger audiences. That's partly why I'm doing this, building it. Aye. But to, even if I don't, doing 50 people twice a day in Edinburgh every year is fucking phenomenal that is making it you know and it's kind of a Aye. it's like Aye. if I didn't do comedy at all I wouldn't be doing that people think that you need to be on telly and like Michael McIntyre Aye. or something to make it but it's the reality is you, you know to, to probably make it properly certainly in comedy I think you probably need to be in London if, if you're talking about making it to play it. live at the Apollo and Aye. all that but for us, and sounds like it's similar for you, it's like doing the thing you love. Aye. Plenty crowds. You make people laugh. We make, you know, people dance. And Aye. It's like, that's making it. Do, do, you know know? What's, do you know what's good about it these days? It's like, uh, you're kind of a, you know, I know you get London and all that, but these days with social media, like, uh, it cuts out the big producers and all that. Jank, it's got less so like that. Oh, aye. aye I was going to say that. The game aye. is changing. It's not oh, so much. Totally. Especially aye. with comedy, it's less now about, as you say, maybe being more London-centric, trying aye. to get on that's BBC good, or whatever. That's good. Aye. It's aye. like podcasts are, podcasts are kind of taking over. I look, look at the guys that make the big... There's the guys you like. There's, um, the, uh, there's some laugh. There's some laugh Glasgow. podcast. There's Have Mark Jennings aye, and all the guys that. Are good. Have a word. There's... Like Gary Folds and Gary Meikle who have made it big just aye. social media they guys like, are great and, and, and like Gary Folds selling out the pavilion aye. like aye. He's, he's sold out more than two thirds of it for November coming aye and then that's just the, and most of his videos just him sitting in his car talking shite aye because he was a taxi pe- driver People for a while. just love genuineness though don't aye. they they just like to see someone with personality and aye. it's a bit of a laugh do you know have doing that so that, uh, it's good to hear that i'd say probably in music as well it's aye. maybe cut out that hangy folk having to go to london as much there's definitely more bands with record deals now aye. The, well you kind of hear less generation. about bands young bands sort of striving for record traditional record deals with record companies now aye. it's more about getting it out yourself these days aye aye I mean, is Lewis Cabaldi a good example of that because he was like he, he can uh, was his part or no part of him making it big definitely aye. Aye, uh, his his uh, aunties are from Moody'sburn. Really? Aye, honestly, aye. Back to Moody'sburn. Here we go. Fucking <laughs> Moody'sburn. The we produced Moody'sburn. We were produced. The Colonel Mustard, the DJ on Five, Lewis Cabaldi's auntie stays there. Jim Watt, the boxer, was there. Aye, loved him Moody'sburn. 
I think that's an uh, Obi the comedian. I'm me and all right. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is there? There's Martha McBriar, the uh, comedian who lives down in London somewhere now. F- footballer that played for Hearts, played for Celtic for a bit as well. Oh, I'm not very good with football, by that. His name is he's, he's Craig. What's his name again? Ah, oh, can't remember. Oh, I know you're talking about. Uh, I no, I did uh, Craig. Um, oh, fuck. I know you're talking about. Uh, he just lives, his mom and dad live just up the road for me. Aye. I'm sure. He he done well. He's, in the he's Googling. Long. Chris is a Googler. Craig Beatty. Craig, Craig Beatty. Beatty. Aye, aye. aye, he played with Celtic. Aye, but apparently his family are big Rangers fans. I don't know. <laughs> I think his dad had to hide a few aye, tattoos a few from Rangers the Celtic tattoos and all that. <laughs> aye, I Craig uh, Beatty. Aye, he was he was a he done all right. Didn't he? he played for a few big teams down south as aye, well, didn't he? Aye, done done well for his. Did self. you know him? Did you know Craig? No, Did no, you know about your uh, age? He's a bit younger. A couple of years younger. Aye. I knew some of his pals, uh, but no, I didn't know him personally. But uh, I think at a certain point, I think you just focus on your own, do you know, thing, don't you? Especially right. if you're a footballer. It's... There's another one, Darren Barr. Do you know him? Oh, hi, Darren. Who's hi, he? Da- Darren. He's, uh, he plays for Falkirk. Darren used right. to come and watch us. Uh, he's pals with, with Alan Dunlop and that. Hi, right. uh, Darren. Right. Darren's a lovely guy. Uh, his brother's a nice guy as well. Was there no like a DJ in Moody's Burn as well somewhere? Like, I remember like Paddy Clark, who used to, do you know Paddy Clark? Paddy, like, I... Paddy used to talk about as a guy who used to know was a DJ. That done quite well. He he, he done brilliant in like Ibiza and all that. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Joey Riot. I don't know his name. But I said there's a guy that Joe, Joe McHugh. He he's in the sort of uh, is that stage uh, name Joey, Joey Riot. Riot. A hardcore. Uh, he yeah. plays like it's probably doing Joe a disservice to call his music just hardcore. He plays lots of types of dance music, but Aye. he's he's massive. Roddy actually went and they went, they were at primary school together. Right, Roddy went and played congas at like this hardcore gig, and Joe was like a pure superstar walking about. Aye. And I uh, used like, was that in Ibiza? Did they do Ibiza? I think it like was down at Butlins or somewhere like that. Oh, I just I, killed it with Butlins. I, well, <laughs> but I, I think he goes all over the world. Aye. Where, and I'm I just looking up now. He's doing a festival in Croatia this summer. Aye. <laughs> aye. So, so what's his name? Well, Joe, Joe McHugh, but Joey Riot. But, so that's his name, aye. So there's Glenn Cairn. It used to be him in Darn Bar. Darn Bar, not Darn Bar. Darn McL... No. Darn, anyway. Uh, it was MC Riot and DJ Defiance, and they used right. to run a thing called the Lethal Mix, the TLM. Right. Uh, but at that stage, we were like, I was like, indie, I don't listen to dance music, uh, I love dance music I love now. dance music, man. And I, I got into it more and more, but Joe used to always say, he's coming into a TLM, and I nearly went in one night, but I didn't, didn't go in, but I regret it now, because... Uh, so where was TLM then? Was, was in, they... in the Pivot Centre. Oh, did they do that in there? But uh. we, we used to, when we were doing the milk, it'd be me, Popeye... John Berry. <laughs> and we some do, names getting uh, chucked oh, around here. Hell, we'd, <laughs> we'd do the milk and every time we went through Glen Cairn because that's where all the hardcore heads were from Aye. we would bring in hardcore every morning about Aye. six in the morning we'd do it'd be like a, we had certain milk songs for parts <laughs> so we'd do like uh, a milk song and then as soon as we got to Glen Cairn it'd be going through Glen Cairn Aye. we bring in hardcore <laughs> <laughs> and like banging well, you and play like, that in the milk, in the I, milk. Well, every morning, or the milk driver uh, Gordon would go off his nutways because we'd be like pure, like having <laughs> a rave sake, in man. the van every single morning. So, what were you doing that then? I uh, at high school, I was in my fifth and sixth year. So, because everybody I knew done the milk was primary school. Was it? I, Aye, well, it was Stephen Westwood, like another, he was another nursery guy, wasn't he? Right. Him and Mick Murphy used to do the milk primary school. Aye. There was two milk fans, so uh, there was Fan Deedley and Gordon. Aye. Fat Gordon, as we called them. Fat Gordon, no. uh, feel, <laughs> feel bad. <laughs> Sorry for Fat Gordon aye. if you listen. <laughs> I'm going to like take a note of all these names and put them in there. Oh, fuck. Aye. Do you know what it's like? Do you ever, ever like, live somewhere and like... You don't know him. Do you know that guy? Do you know, I have no idea. But then you do all the nicknames. Aye, I know you're talking about. Aye. I remember years ago I went to a, I went to a, um, it was a stag do, right, in Nottingham. Right. So I can't remember who it was. And uh, somebody says, they gave me a list, that's all who's going. I was like, I don't know any of these guys. He went, that's Scud, that's Popeye, that's fucking, oh, aye. Aye, I know every one of them. Aye. They just give you all the nicknames. The, like, the aye, I, I know every one of them, aye. <laughs> And, and they two will still be standing up the larch right now as we speak. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Never out. <laughs> Silver yeah, larch. I do miss Moody's Burnhouse Hotel, I have to say, when that got told down. That oh, was, that was an alright wee pub, wasn't it? I'd moved back to Moody's Burn briefly by that time. And Big Craig for the band, he met his wife Fathom there. Aye. Uh, they, aye that's where they got together. And Helena 
uh, Shug McCallum's aye, partner, aye, Helena. Aye. They all worked in there, so we used to have. Oh, a they great, worked in there. Aye, we aye. used to have a great time in in Moody's Burn House. So that was a, I, I never really spent a full night in there. The Moody's Burn House was always a stop off point before you get the bus into the tune. Aye. <laughs> You know, because it's... Do you, do you remember the Moody's Burn House? Oh, yeah. So it was like... You used to... There was a bus stop just to get in the tune. Oh, yeah. So I was at uni at the time. Me and Big John Reynolds used to be meeting guys for uni. Aye. Oh, yeah. We'll get a quick pint in there. We'll time the bus. But the bus were there in five minutes. We'll go, ah, we'll just have one more pint. And we'd end up, we'd turn up into the tune about three hours <laughs> after we're meant to be there. Never lose away by that point. Aye. So we just ended up <laughs> at a nightclub or something. Aye. What nightclubs did you used to go to? A fucking... In the tune, man. Um, I used to like the garage. Aye, on a Thursday I night as the, a student. I like the garage. Aye, my student days. That aye. was a, always a good one. And uh, where else was there? Our chaos. Our chaos. You're aye, too young for good. all this, Chris, man, aren't you? No, well, the garage is still there. I've been there. Aye, the garage is yeah, still aye. there. Uh, Not else? really a clubby person, but if I am, it's always the cat house these days. Aye. Aye, so see, the thing is, like, I, I was, I was, didn't have the right look for the cat house, but I used to enjoy it occasionally because it was like. Uh, well, there's, it was the pretentious. You think there's a look for the cat house, but when you go in, it's actually very eclectic. We, we, got, <laughs> we played a gig. What was that word? Eclectic. I need to Google that. What does that mean? Uh, any it plays lots of things. Aye, or right. lo- aye, lots of looks or whatever right. it's yeah. describing. Uh, but aye, we, we played a gig early days. We might have been, a, I think we were about 18, 19 at the time in the cat house. Aye. And then they wouldn't let us in upstairs into the club. <laughs> Um, really? Aye, so I've after never, playing the gig? Aye, I've still never been to this day. I probably would have quite enjoyed it as well, but... Uh, but you had that good enough fuck one. Aye. I've yeah. fucked you, you cunt. So did you have the shirt? That's probably too much for the cat house well, or shirt like that. back in the day, aye. I was at this flamboyant. Aye, right, right. That was interesting, though, doing like, the early gigs where I was a stare at your shoes kind of moody singer. Aye, is that what you were like, aye? Aye, aye so like, the, the sort of stage presence and that's took years before Aye. almost took to have the pseudonym as the colonel for it to fully go I was going to say I can't like, picture you being that way it's like, I've only ever known you as like when you're coming on stage in a festival like leading a fucking march through a field Aye. to get there Aye. So, <laughs> let's chat about that man I like the, I like that idea because like, like, like just chatting to you is just a normal bloke right Aye. but you've got this big fucking presence on stage haven't you I'm doing the West of Scotland mail hang and I'll keep myself. Aye, wait, aye. I, 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 I'll take it. Aye, so, I, but you have like, like um, you just you become this big fucking Elvis. Can I? Well, no, no, quite Elvis, but yeah, because he was a pedo. But you become, <laughs> <laughs> you become this big superstar. But that that is like, how long did that? Take? How did that develop then, John? That's that, that's the kind of shit I'm I'm, I'm fascinated by. Well, she, she just started off I, quite quite kind of shy. I, well, it used to be that just staring at my shoes, singing, and maybe I don't know. That's my memory of it. Anyway, I, other people might say differently but I didn't feel I had much stage presence when I was in my teens and early 20s well, you're, you're good at music but you didn't have the no even that I, I wasn't probably even that good at music either <laughs> do you know but I was I was there and, ah, I, was yeah, doing I, it and I was cutting my teeth and but it took uh, I was in a band after Sonus the one I was in with Roddy and all that I went to uni and one of my pals Lucy that was uh, doing the nursing training as well her partner Dave uh, was like he he played music, so we were Aye. on a night out, and it was Gordon that used to run the barish rehearsal rooms. He was running a night in McCool's, and he was like, oh, "I remember McCool's. That was a good band." Aye. And Aye. All, all the bands that night had pulled out, and I think we were going to see a pal's band, and he was like, "John, are you are you able to do something tonight? Because there's no acts on." I was like, "Well, I've just met this guy Dave. That's might be a good guitarist. I could." If you've got an acoustic, I could go and aye, see. Aye. And me and Dave, we went to like Gordon's car and just managed to belt out a few covers. And Dave was hitting great harmonies, and I hadn't really had that before in aye. any bands. And just had this instant chemistry. And we went up and played a gig. And after that, we went on. And I think because we just took the piss out of each other on aye, stage. Aye, aye, aye. The banter for the word go. It was like, all oh, right, there's this extra thing you can do aye. when you're on stage aye. where. It's it is still performing, but it was just like natural banter we were having with each other. But so it, we, did, it didn't really do that before then. No. So did it, was it just a switch of confidence? I, th- I think so, but that was a gradual thing as well, where we we became the ping pong banana show. Right. But 
a, my song. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds like something like, like, like fucking Sticky Vicky would do. <laughs> Benadog. I went to that in Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, well, Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave, show. Dave came up with that name, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, uh, so uh, again, it was a gradual thing where when we started doing that, one day I, I brought this song that I wrote in about five minutes called Ginger Girl. Right, and it's right. Still to this day, it's like the song that's, you know, probably opened the most doors, but aye, aye. It's, it might not be the end of the world, but it always ends in tears with a ginger girl. Right, it was aye. my pal that I was doing my nursing training with, was drunk one night and was, oh, was a ginger girl on, aye. on the whiskey. No, he, he was saying to me, John, like, he was breaking his heart and he's like, John, it might not be the end of the world, but it always ends in tears with a ginger girl. And <laughs> yeah, I, don't fuck know, it, yes. I don't know how I remembered that the next day, but I wrote it down and then just wrote this wee country song. Aye. And the, the thing was, when I took it to the studio, Dave Dave loved it and he was like, mate, that's brilliant. Aye. And he sang this harmony and we were in stitches, like just way how funny it was, like this pure amazing country harmony. And when we started playing it live, like all Aye. the all the Moody's Burn folk that used to come and follow us, without prompting, they started singing it back. And Aye. it was like, oh, what's this? So now you get a breakthrough. Aye, Aye. It was like crowd participation. And Aye. I think up to that point, I've as a music fan, the thing I always love is when a band gets the crowd involved Aye. 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 the most. So, so you had quite figured that out, mate. Up to that point, no, I hadn't. and at that point, it was like, right, this is this is what it's all about. This this feeling that Aye. you're getting from that connection with the crowd, and uh, that song, uh, the movie director Michael Caton Jones, he saw us playing it up in Inverness. It's on the Ron Perlman movie. It's the the end, oh, really? end song uh, on Hitman Redemption. I think it's on Netflix or oh, yeah, you'll yeah, get like, it somewhere. Hitman but, Redemption. Aye, but I hadn't realised I was negotiating with Ron Perlman. For, aye. Like, <laughs> he was the producer and uh, I'd, I, I'd accidentally not sent an email, so I think he thought I was playing hardball, but I was like... <laughs> just just aye, being a daft cunt. Aye, aye. Aye, Dave was like, uh, aye, John, you need to ask for, do you know, more money because it's the end song, the very final song, like end credit song. Aye. So I was like, eh, we'd like some more money for that and they came back and... And then they made an offer, and I was, and I replied just to go, "Aye, that's fine," because uh, I'd I'd put an offer in, but I hadn't realised that went into my drafts. I hadn't actually <laughs> sent. And I'm that's like, a shot I've been doing about, about a month had passed, and I'm like, "Fuck, oh, this opportunity's passed by." And then I got an email to go, "Right, we'll pay you the amount you asked for," and I'm like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh god And then that's when I realised <laughs> That that was sitting in my drafts But Oh fucking hell Felt like a pure top, top This guy has got nerves to steal that He's got this opportunity aye. He doesn't give a fuck aye. <laughs> <laughs> But aye It was like Aye Pure poker <laughs> face Like, aye, like aye. Who's going to make the first move That's a danger movie Fuck that aye. shit so, That's phenomenal aye But it's, uh, that song in itself Will have Do you know If I ever write a book It will have its own chapter Because It's definitely I've played it all over the world And it's one that I People it's just a funny song. And, Aye, brilliant, man. Uh, one of the last taboos. And so, uh, because we've got a couple of gingers in the band, I think it's still fine. But, uh, <laughs> aye, it's, it's... So do you have to take them off stage when you play it? Or no, no, to no, take no, the gingers no, off stage. It. But, it's just, but that's the one song that passed for when uh, it was the Ping Pong Banana Show to Colonel Mustard. But... Dave left, he actually joined Paolo and Natini's band. Aye. Uh, aye. Pa- Paolo came up and sang it one night with his oh, uh, uh, Aye. Uh, but anyway, Dave left to go and do that. And at that point, I was like, right, the next thing I'm doing, I want it to be all singing, all dancing. I want it to be the ultimate festival band. Right. And my pal down at Glastonbury, Goose, he does like football coaching now. They write all these nicknames uh, down, man. Uh, <laughs> but he said, like, oh, I've came up with this name, John, Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. And it was just a happy accident. I, again, I remembered that and I was like, are you okay with me using the name? And So, and, oh, so who was the guy that came up with the name? So Goose, I used to manage his band and right. I got them a gig at Glastonbury. Right. And we were like... So you up for that name for you? He just came up with it and right. he just told me it. And I was like, well, because David left to go and join Paolo and I was like, my next band, I want to be all singing, all right. dancing, like outfits, so, so see, characters. Like, like, did that come for that song, but... 
No, the the uh, Colonel Master and the Dijon Five just came from my pal. Ah, but I mean, come, did the the kind of uh, you changing from just a kind of normally oh, band uh, come from that song? Oh, fuck, that's it. It was I, like that you cracked it, your it, persona or what I, you wanted to do with it. Definitely, as soon as as soon as the people were singing that back, we wrote a couple more songs. Aye. But so you found your vibe, kind aye, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean. But then for the next band, it, it was let like every song. I want crowd participation. Aye, aye, aye. I want let like every song the crowd to feel a part of this Aye. and I think that's still do you know why the reason so many people come and see Aye. is because they feel they're part of the band they're Aye. wearing their yellow t-shirt or Aye. do you know Aye. dancing it... about and f- just acting daft and Aye. do you know silly and that's that's something that people that's see what you want, like, it? that's get, you want. get it's on like, board with it's like uh, life's too short and all that isn't it it's Oof. like fun Aye. Because you've got that walking across the road song. What's Aye. that one again? Cro- across the road. Because you've got everybody walking about like... Just... Aye, but that's <laughs> one I just used to sing to my kids. So I just made it up walking Aye. along the street and like, when we stopped, like, right, look left. Look, Aye. And then, cross the road. Cro- and, <laughs> and then the guys were jamming like a reggae ska hang one Aye. day and I started singing it. That, that's how that one came about. So I is, g- it, is it kind of a, like, you, you, you kind of a, like, I think it, you just turn into like a gig for people just let everything like they leave all their shit at Aye. home and they're just fucking just a kid again no inhibitions just be a, just be your inner child because that's Aye. that's the best person to be it's what what you always are isn't it and Aye. be your li- inner child li- li- life and being an adult i think sometimes you know you have to mature in some ways but ultimately you want to play and you want to have fun Aye. Aye. Uh, and it's something I pro- it's probably the thing I get slagged for the most as well. We get the adult singing kettle or the singing kettle on acid, but I'm like, I'm, I'm, fucking I'm, hell, I'll, t- I'll take that. I used to love the singing kettle. That's what I used to love it. Aye. Aye, see, like, I'll, I'll still watch, I'll still lo- love watching things like fucking SpongeBob and all that. Man. I'll, Aye. I'll sit in the house and just watch Family Guy's SpongeBob and shit. Aye, they're all brilliant. Because I think it's, I think it's true, Chris, that like, you're only, like, what age are you, 27? Aye. Oh yeah, did you know turn 28 or? I've just done 27 last oh, week. Oh, you just turned 27. It's happy like, birthday, mate. Cheers. Uh, I know, happy birthday, right? I never got you in, sorry. That's uh, the <laughs> age that all the rock stars died at. Well, I know. Oh, my, girl, <laughs> my girlfriend's <laughs> uh, 27, she's turning 28 in March and she's like, Who's if I turn? make it to the end. Ja- ja- oh, she turned so 28. Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain, Cobain Jimmy Jimmy Winehouse, Amy Winehouse. Aye. Amy Winehouse, Brian Jones for oh, the... Yeah. Uh, st- uh, I was going to say Stone Rose <laughs> the, the Rolling Stones um, uh, No Ainsley says that Like she's turning 28 in March And she's like If I die before that That means I'm a legend <laughs> uh, <laughs> Keep an eye on her Chris well, don't, be, on her. don't be going too hard At Butte Fest this year no, that's, it. that's after So that's if she gets to Butte Fest Right um, just look at, we'll, need to look, we'll need to look after Chris for a year man. Just keep my eye. I'll send him some love We'll lock him uh, in this garage uh, And just feed him things <laughs> produce, Just uh, produce uh, for me Aye uh, um, but no, what you're talking about the just that kind of vibe of festival bands. I really like that. I never, I've never kind of felt that or experienced it outside festivals, just at other gigs. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Like I've seen you're probably one of the first bands I saw like that. And then do you know Dope Sick Fly? I am pals with Ant. He, he sings on uh, our song "This Is Your House." Right. I'm in Mary Kiani, so me, so me like and Ant write a lot of stuff together. Aye. So like between that first year I did Butte Fest, it was you and them kind of gave that the same way uh, Tom Maguire. Yeah, Tom's, Tom's like... Was he similar, aye? He's, he's that different level there. It's like funk, jazz, and they're all like proper trained musicians, whereas right. we're all sort of self-taught. Some of the some of our brass can read music and they, they come from like a brass band. Aye, and aye. Then samba, uh, samba band sort of background. But Tom McGuire and the Brass Holes, it's all folk that are reading music. But right. Tom Tom's a genius. He's br- and his, his stage shows and that, he's taking it up to another level aye. which I'm gutted I missed his one at the Barras last year aye. I was I at the mean, one before was at the, the fruit market one I was aye. at that one that was class I wasn't at the fruit market one but I was at the Barras that was amazing and then uh, recently up at SWG3 it was great that Is that, are they doing the O2 or did they do SWG3 I instead of I think they were it? going to do the O2 and I'm not sure I think they've changed it got, it, got moved aye. it's aye. been anyway uh, but aye they're, they're fantastic but for the word go I always said like in our bio, the ultimate festival band. Aye, even, aye, aye. even before we played a festival, aye. It took us about four years to. Aye. Aye. It's like your band has a presence at the full weekend of a festival, just with fans cutting about. Aye. Even the day you're no playing, aye. wearing the t-shirts with the flags and all that. Just I've never like seen a, that with any other band. It's like a cult, isn't it? Aye, aye. So I'll, see, um, 
Well, what's like, like what fascinates me, right, with stuff like that, right? We we spoke about this before, Chris, is like the you have like an alter ego. So, so you think like when you're on stage you've got this alter ego Aye. guy. Aye, I was gonna say that. Aye, so, like, I could be even up at Aberdeen there, I was pure tired. I just before the gig going on went in a few kind of fans and friends kicking about and you're putting on a brave face but before that I'm thinking I can't be asked for this I can do this but as soon as you as soon as you put on the outfit the hat aye. and I think it's more but as soon as you step on stage and aye. The, I the get the energy of, aye, aye the back and forth between the crowd but right away and that was like we, we ended up playing for nearly two hours at ah, Hugbany there right. and definitely even at festivals where I've maybe went to too hard the night before, do you know, having aye, a drink, baby, like, that, only having a, and I don't do that as much now, I'll maybe do that once a year, last aye. year I don't think I've done it at all, where like, I'm I'm more enjoying my gigs sober and aye, aye, just aye. enjoying that experience a lot more, being able to sing better, but back, back in the sort of mad days, eh, I'd maybe have been up all night and I never sleep or no sleep and it's like, oh, how am I going to pull this off? But as soon as you're getting the Aye. stuff on, and you know, it, it does it does something where you're, like, you're not you're not John McAlinden, you're the Colonel. Aye. So, <laughs> so Jake, it's like, have you got? Do you think about it uh, consciously, or does it just no, happen? It just happens. Is it that... just happens. I there's maybe a bit of that sort of psyching yourself up a wee Aye. bit that goes on, but I think it just happens. And when you're on stage, so is it the like, jacket that turns it? Kind of turns it to this more, guy? more probably the hat, but a combination of the Aye. things. But I think Aye. it is more just that going on stage and the feedback you're Aye. getting for the crowd, the you know Aye. the energy, especially if they know you. But even if they don't, like even in the early days, we used to play like nice and sleazies and play it as if we're playing to, you know, 10,000 people, aye, like aye. just mad, getting in the crowd, putting folk in your aye. shoulders, like getting them involved in all sorts of aye. antics, you know, aye. so. Have you kind of spoke about that recently? Like both of us kind of find, as you were saying, kind of, if you kind of be asked once you're on, for me, it's oh, aye, totally when, when you're into the first song, you're into the groove of it. And then it kind of flashes by. Do you get that? Like at the end of a gig, once you're back off, you're like, I don't even really remember that. Aye. It just happened. Loads of gigs like that, aye. And loads of moments like that aye. where you're I, just, you're... Did you get the zone? Aye. Than I, you just kind of go, fuck it hell. Well, you're just performing, you're like, fuck it hell. Aye. It's just your flow. You become a superpower kind of thing. Because you've kind of got that extra layer of the the character of it all. Like I was, I, I'm not like that with music, but aye. you, to an extent, in aye. terms of comedy, you've oh, got a bit aye, of a character, aye. as you say. Like, because I say things on stage that I couldn't get away with. <laughs> I, 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 I kick in if I said some of the things on stage. Think you were talking about it when we had Graham on. Like, if somebody comes up to you and they're like, "Oh, you're a comedian," he's a joke, and you're like, "The persona isn't on." I can't just do that. Aye, like, it's the worst thing for a say a comedian as well because it's like a lot of what you do is storytelling. Aye, do you aye, know, and aye. like making people laugh with do you know, like the sort of. What's the word I'm looking for? Like the minute details and aye. the timing. And aye, aye. Aye. Unless you're like a one-liner type comic, you kind of really just aye, tell aye. a joke. Do you know what I mean? I was like, so you go. I was got nuance. That's the word I'm looking for. Aye. It's a nuance aye, so thing. we can subtle things I don't even know aye. what I'm doing because yeah. there's a, a thing they know, right? So like, you know that I'm working in a warehouse in New Chris, right? Yep. Um, like, <laughs> and it's like, I tell people I do comedy, right? And I don't know if you get that. People, you're kind of, you, you've got a bigger name, but did you ever look, work with somebody and you, you say you do music, they could ever look at you sceptically? Aye. So I say, like, I'm, I'm working with people. Uh, so it happened last week, there's like a warehouse job, you're driving about in this wee truck, putting thing, picking things for the co-op, fucking amazing, right? <laughs> and uh, there was a lassie who trained me just to do some certain jobs. And I said, oh, I do, um, I do a bit of comedy, but because you're in a warehouse, they could have, they could have go... What? Like you, like they can I look at you? You can tell by the look. They can I go? I fuck off. You know that, you know that kind of look. And says I'm going down to Newcastle at the weekend, and uh, and she said she's seen. Oh, oh, do you know Mark Nelson? Like he's like a, aye, like a big name, and he's aye, like, oh, he, she's a fan of Mark Nelson because she's seen him. Yeah. God, I love Mark Nelson and all that. Oh, aye, he's Mark's good. And so, but she just hang in her head. I'm just a wee guy that does the odd gig. Aye. And and I go. I was down at Newcastle. I go. Oh, did you go down all right? Is that? Oh, I don't know, man. I know. I know what I'm doing. I've and been then, doing this for quite a while. Aye, and she goes, uh, and, and I'm saying, I'm doing a gig in like, March and all that. And she's like, uh, it's, it's, can I that? Can I, I don't know if I want to go to that kind aye. of thing. You can it, just tell. It's weird, but because my persona in a warehouse is like, bored out my brain. Yeah. You know, <laughs> aye, they're not seeing that performer. Aye, because I'm driving about doing a job. Aye. But also, I think a lot of people as well, until 
like well in bands we said it earlier on if you're doing king touch or the bar is it's like oh god who, who's this guy but if you were to say oh i am i am doing the pavilion do you know so, like it, you, you get a different response aye Whereas it's like, no, there's like lots of good comedy happening aye. in lots of places aye. and you don't need to be aye. aye. There's like people don't realise even to do, you know, a wee gig like you're doing in Newcastle or if you're playing a small venue in Glasgow, aye. even if it's something they've not heard of, to you it might be a big deal. They don't realise how many years of work go into even being able to do that level of aye. gig. Never aye. been, been on the telly. And the smaller gigs well, hard, can be harder. Well, that's it. But it's like, just like somebody that might not be that into comedy. If you say, oh, I'm a comedian, I do a bit of comedy, they're like, no, if you're not in live with the Apollo, like, there's no such thing as being a comedian. Aye, do you know what yeah. I mean? They, they, don't realize, they don't realise the circuit is a thing. Aye, aye. And also, half the comics that, you know, are better than... Absolutely. Yeah. Aye, aye, live totally at the aye. Apollo, aye. they're just not, you know, TV friendly aye. a lot of the time. But aye. it's interesting, you have, like, at one point in our career, uh, we, we just felt as if we were on the up. Aye. And when that day came where it's like, oh, you've not sold as many tickets for that next gig, that's like a major one to take aye. where like your ego and like... Oh, fuck like, it, aye, aye. Uh, but it's a good thing overall at the time it's not, but it's, it's, I think it's good to have the ups and downs aye. at times. Aye, because you think, you think bits like that makes you, work, makes you work harder. Aye. And also it's a reality check. It's like aye. things are just always going smoothly and you're just on... It's it's no real life, is it? It's like you need the challenges. Oh, and you totally. Need the, uh, as much as they're really frustrating at the time. Because I, I find that as well. If I'm like, having a run of gigs that I'm on good form, aye. then you have a kind of ropey one. You kind of go, all right, uh, I've not been working. I'm taking it for granted that I'm good at this. Aye. So aye. I, I've not really been working on. So I'm just turning up. Going, I'll just do whatever I feel like. We yeah. sometimes can get away. Well, most of the time I can get away with when I've not really been writing as much, uh-huh. then I kind of go, all right, I've took my foot off the pedal a wee aye. bit. And that can be good to force yourself to get aye, back into it. I just know, all right, I need to work on a few wee bits just to kind of keep myself up. Aye. Definitely. Aye, it's a positive. And any time you're working on something, even a lot of the time you'll go in before a big gig and it's a rehearsal and it's maybe not that great. Aye. But you've put the hours in and aye, aye. by the time you go on, because you always step, step it up when you're performing aye. but even the fact you've done that and had a bad you know rehearsal at least you've done work towards aye, getting aye. it better it's which... amazing how much of a difference a, a, a crowd or just the vibe of being on stage can make you're aye. doing that you can do that you can rehearse for six hours or something and be like yeah it'll, it'll do aye, and aye. then you have the show of your life and it's just because of the energy it's like definitely aye because it's like stand up see doing stand up in front of a mirror it just doesn't work but, oh, yeah. but you can tell, like, I can tell, like, a comedian right away if he's been rehearsing in front of a mirror for weeks. Yeah. Because it's false as fuck. Aye. Because I, I don't really rehearse, I have my ideas, but I know if I rehearse in the house, it's it's fucked because it's no, you need to get that freshness with an audience kind aye. of thing. I don't know if it's similar with music a wee bit. I think. I we, suppose you need to know, you, you've got all your band together and all that, I suppose, but. I, I think there's probably less ad-libbing or at less than in music but aye, it's aye. definitely my favourite moments any gig is when something mad happens in the crowd aye, and aye. you can get a bit of banter or, or even make that part of the song or do you know ad lib something aye. like so the, they're the most exciting aye, aye. points for me so can, can the band can ad lib together a wee bit do they, that, do wee things happen? Aye, they can rehearse or maybe Big Craig started playing a beat after a song and Chris gets on to it and then something funny happens and I'll you know start singing so I make up a song on the aye, aye, aye. or even in the rehearsal studio that, that can happen as well aye. which is you know a great buzz as well a something just happening aye, there aye. in the room at the time because so, you've got that kind of chemistry with your bandmates and that there's a good kind of unspoken language with musicians do you know what I mean like if you if you want to obviously you being the front man you can there's a sort of psychic thing where you can just turn around and be like right break it down we're going to keep it down here and react to something and talk about yeah and there's just like a look that you can give each other aye, and everyone's aye, like totally i get it right let's do this keep it aye, and then aye. you're in control do you know what i mean because you're the colonel <laughs> aye. Aye, so, aye. But, but then sometimes it can just be what the drummer like craig he'll he'll give me a look or do you know and you know something's coming or aye. vice versa so i it's you definitely get a bit of that telepathy the more you Aye. play together. But me and Craig, we've been in bands together since we were, you know, what, 16, 17. And, yeah. Uh, Aye, so there's definitely that. I suppose it's more about instinct and knowing what the person's going to do or giving, giving a person space to 
do what they're doing as I well. See, it's just a like trust it. thing as well, isn't it? Aye. The kind of trust in your bandmates. So if, so if somebody kicks something, I think, all right, cool, let's go with that. Aye. Aye. Have you seen, there was a video going around recently of a kind of jazzy jam band. Right. And uh, it was like a bass player and a sax player or something. Or kind of doing wee back and forth, wee runs. And then at one point, they just at the same point play the exact same run. Aye. Just out of their heads and Aye. they both freak out. Like that's do they? One of my favourite examples of seeing that, just this language that they've come up with a wee melody in their head and, and played it on different instruments it. at the exact same Aye. time. And them and everyone oh. in the crowd is just like, Whoa. Oh, there is that. There is. <laughs> I'm, I'm always cynical with stuff like that, though, as, as it. Because you get some people that practice something that seems ad like lived. But no, I feel like the reaction to this one looked genuine enough Aye. that you're like, if I was in that position, I know how I would feel when that's Aye. what that looks like. So. <laughs> even if it is, even if that's part of the performance, it's more like Aye. how they've made that audience feel. Like, yeah. wow, like, Aye. you know, this Aye. is amazing. You yeah. do get wee bits of magic happening, don't you? Like, Aye. with comedy, sometimes some magic happens, you're like, fucking hell, I wish I had a camera for that. Aye. You know, it's probably the same with you, and it just you, something happens one night, you're like, fucking hell, you can't, you can't repeat that. Nah, Aye. it's like, have you, you seen that clip? Can't... Have you seen that clip of Tom Maguire when they give the guitar, the guitar to the guy? where he throws it into the crowd? So, like a guy, Fest. aye, was it Eden Fest? Aye. aye, so they're playing a song, aye, and I think, was he holding a sign, or did Tom just say, like, Give, give me his guitar I think he just done a does MD what he kind of have a go at shredding this this Aye. solo and, and uh, you would expect uh, somebody uh, just to get to pick up a guitar just for the excitement of oh and they uh, can't play and they just fuck it up but this guy picks up the guitar and plays an incredible solo and the whole uh, band everyone there is just like oh my god and it went viral that's aye, insane aye aye that was a great did they get him on stage as well but no I, he gives him the guitar like just down he's standing at the front barrier in front of the stage and he aye. just kind of plays it on the ground Aye. Aye, no, that's brilliant. That was that guy's big big moment. Aye. Aye, he plays yeah. in bands as well. Like, I followed him on Instagram from that and he plays Aye. in all sorts of Aye. bands as well. But it's funny, uh, anytime we we get filmed by the BBC for Belladrum, it's always the year that not as much is happening in the crowd. There was a year that we reunited like a lost child with a mum during our set. We got the, the <laughs> pure crowd to part. Uh, oh, you just made that, up like No, no, there was like a kid, a, a kid that had you know, got separated for their mum and a oh, woman. Right, and a the, the gig. I no, it's it's not like a, they've not brought Maddie back. Aye, it's, <laughs> come on, man. Come on, girl. Okay. So I thought it was like, 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 a, the, like Esther Rance's fucking being right there. Surprise, it's surprise. It's been 25 years. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, but no, this wee lass had got lost and we were Aye. like, right, so, and just put the shout out and then reunited. That's oh, brilliant, man. There's always so mad, you mad things the happen. Aye, that's I think it's always disease. keeping an eye on what's happening in aye, the crowd. Aye, aye. As a comedian, you must do that all aye, the time. Aye, but de- definitely, as a front man, that's part of what I like to do and feeding off like even wee funny things happening aye. or getting folk up that's like, oh, they're do what I might be doing a great dance or be wearing a mad costume, but you pull them up aye. and then it's you know it's fun so you're kind of a you're kind of a playing the crowd as well aren't you you're not just playing music you're playing the crowd you're, right. you're playing the energy in the crowd aren't you that's kind of right. you're kind of going right where do you want this to go we want a wee quiet moment we want a big moment we want the energy to go up down right. well know? it's generally we'll have like some down moments in the set musically although even in the those sad ones not so much sad but uh, just like maybe a wee country song like right. c- country as fuck where but again, you're getting the crowd singing along in aye. them as well. So it's still I the just participation. The there. A wee bit. But uh, you just you couldn't go well you could, but it's good to have different vibes and even it's like having a rest in it, it's like having a wee rest aye. 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 Musically as well, playing different genres, it's fun. You play lots of different genres and not just be stuck in with a rock and roll band or do you know, with a funk band that's like we play reggae, do you know, funk, soul, country and aye. dance music, like, so it's ah, good that's to good, man, yeah. Eclectic, I believe. So oh, I've, I've, heard, I've heard a new word today, Chris. <laughs> send, send me that as a message later. I'll Google it so I remember it. Today's new word is eclectic. Eclectic. I know. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm getting it wrong for comedy effect. How do you spell it? E C L E C L E C T T I C. Eclectic. That sounds like. No, what? there's another C in there. E C L E C T I C, I would say. How you've got the girl made words up to. I'm not good at spelling eclectic. That, way. that sounds like, like you steal things at the, the shop. Klepto. A- klepto. Oh, hey, Norman's like another <laughs> reference. <laughs> no, I mean, me, me, he's born reference there. Like, I'm, I'm an eclectic, I'm an eclectic <laughs> maniac. Oh, back to, to Medusburn. Here we go. M Bomb. M Bomb. Fucking hell. 
Um, so, so what else? Any questions, Chris? You're more of the music man than um, me, so... Venues, you've mentioned the bars. Like, what's your favourite venue to play? Bar- Barlands, definitely. Nice. His favourite. The, the one we're due to play... Uh, we're doing a, I'm not sure when this goes out, but we're doing a gig on Sunday the 4th of February. That'll be after, this'll be in February. Aye. But... Aye. I was hope it? it was good. Aye. <laughs> it was great. So uh, when is this one going out then? This, will, uh, this is episode eight. So. Episode eight, let me... So it's the, the fruit market. Uh, the oh, old I love fruit the fruit market. market. That's probably my second favourite. But I love like stereo and like aye. aye. Some of the smaller venues. Aye. Like, well, nice and sleazy. I'm and actually doing like a solo show, Nice and Sleazy, in the Glasgow Comedy Festival. Oh, which brilliant. I'm looking forward to. It's an afternoon gig. That'll be, oh, d- I'll come along. Aye, that one. so that, that, that should be good, so man. This aye. episode's going to go out on the 22nd of February. 22nd of February, aye. aye. So it'll be after the gig. So, aye, aye oh, what a gig that was. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, the best gig <laughs> ever, man. He blew the roof off, got um, signed up. Liam Gallagher signed them up. <laughs> He's now, uh, John's now part of Oasis, the third front man, second I'm, front man. I'm the new Noel. I, I can't play guitar. <laughs> hey. I can play a wee bit. You don't play the guitar? Did you not? I can you, play a wee bit, but. But no, you don't actually play the guitar uh, enough, in the band? No, enough to write on. So you just sing? Aye. Because they're so, like, Chris is a brilliant guitarist. So right. I, like, I've you, seen you, you play the guitar, but you just play the, the enough chords to. Aye, just to be able like, to write on and go. Make this better. Aye. All right, cool. Uh, um, I do love the, the fruit market as a venue. I, I played in that when I was like uh, part of a, in my primary school. My primary school had a band. Aye. Aye. And uh, aye. it was like primary seven, I think. So I would have been like 10, 11. And we played at some school award event. You were hitting the heights as Back a kid. Man. I did. I've honestly gone downhill. I played the Royal Concert and Hall when primary school. And I was doing a podcast his garage with me. <laughs> I, know. I peaked too early. Garage so. band. <laughs> um, so I had done some good big venues when I was younger. I'd done more like throughout high school. I'd done the concert hall again uh, as part of a kind of North Lanarkshire Council band. And then... Uh, we done the concert hall uh, We It was Hipsway. It was the concert for carers. But it was brilliant. Right. But it's that crowd sitting down. I'm aye. not a big fan of that. Especially but, with your music. But it was nice to play <laughs> it. And, but uh, we... <laughs> back in the day, we used to do for the freshers at Caledonian University. I mm. used to do the odd wee acoustic set for them. It would be me Aye. and Dave. And there was one year uh, <laughs> the band I managed, we got they were doing their safe sex thing where they're all dressed as condoms <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> so I had them playing a gig with like loads of like giant condoms dancing about. That, that was a, a, a good moment that, that I remember for the concert. Have <laughs> um, you ever done, I don't know if really this would suit your lot but the kind of wee venue room that's upstairs in the Hard Rock Cafe in Glasgow we've done the Hard Rock Cafe uh, once back in the day but it was, it was good but Just I don't we, know we did the, the wee Battle of the Bands thing there once aye. Like, I not, up the stair aye. aye they're doing a comedy thing there now I don't, well. I've not done it yet but aye. Um, I just sort of randomly I wasn't expecting it to be that great but Aye. And it's like a tiny stage and there's like I was in a five piece band, obviously, you know, it's like being in a big band squeezing on a wee stage type Aye. thing. But for whatever reason that just was a really good gig. Like sound was on point. It was a good crowd. When we like, played it, the sound was good, but uh, I love I love Mac Arts. Uh, you should get a gig down there in Gal- that? Gala Shields. And they've got a big in a wee room. All right. Uh, Mac Arts. Mac right. Arts. Aye, it's good. It's like run by like just really sound people that are Aye. Uh, they've I think it's like community sort of interest type. All oh, right, so it's like a community hall kind of thing. It's, it's an old uh, church that they've converted oh, right. into a venue, but the people running it look after you, get a nice meal and just sound people, but also great sound oh, lights right. and all oh, that. And when you're playing that. the big or the beer room, but... Gala uh, Shields. Gala yeah, Shields. I'll, I'll try to, try uh, to remember that. But I like the toll booth. i done that with Hunter McMaster last year. Right. Uh, we ended up so that's a more alternative folk thing that was I that in Glasgow? no uh, Stirling so Stirling ah, right, right, right. so uh, Colin Hunter who you've met Colin he done that thing with you but he Colin, Colin started doing a bit of comedy alright at least speak to him then aye, uh, aye. He's, he's, he's so is he brilliant. playing music with a stand up or is he no I, he might do a bit of that but it's more again he's a great storyteller right. Colin and some of the the scrapes and antics he's got up to but, but also he's a he has a lot of total comedy enthusiast where he watches loads and he analyses it and he's Aye. like he's a pure connoisseur of comedy. Well you Chris, aren't you? You're a wee bit of that. See, I'm, 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 I'm bit... not really a connoisseur of comedy, I do comedy, but I don't Aye. watch I need to ask you who's the next big thing on comedy. I, I, but now I'm getting a wee bit sort of thingy about like obviously next week we're starting the workshop 
and I'm a bit like sort of, do I watch too much? Am I going to get uh, too influenced too by influenced watching thing? other stuff? That, ca- that can be a thing. Uh, as I well. think that's why I don't like uh, watching too much. I've heard lots of comedians. I've heard lots of comedians saying that they try and avoid watching. Uh, Aye. Too much comedy. Okay, I can spot a mile away. Like years ago, I used to say to somebody, you're a Stuart Lee fan, aren't you? I went, aye, how can you tell? Aye. Your daily's act. I've, I've helped that uh, with musicians as well, but also authors. Like, aye. Even I was talking to, uh, we were playing a, a venue, where was it again? Through at North Berwick, it was like a festival, in Irvin Welsh, who's, you know, I love Irvin Welsh's books, but got, got a chance to meet him. He, he crossed the road. Uh, Gav, Gav Mitchell, uh, our pal that plays Bobby the oh, Barman, yeah, Bobby and, the Barman uh, he aye. introduced us and after that I was chatting to him and I was talking to him about like Graham Armstrong's book and uh, it's called Young Team I think, uh, it's a boy for Airdrie that's right. like, doing really well, he's a great author and he was kind of saying like I don't read any books that are like the stuff I do <laughs> I ah, just right, avoid yeah, it yeah. so but, the guy for Edward does a similar aye, style except it's not Edinburgh aye, he's probably very influenced by Irvin Welsh aye, but aye. doing his own thing uh, but when I, I spoke I, I assumed Irvin Welsh would have no, and he knew about it but he's like I kind of avoid reading stuff that's aye. like my own stuff aye. and uh, I've heard it with musicians as well like avoiding listening to too much music as aye, well aye, just aye, so aye. it's definitely a thing for me I enjoy watching comedy but I don't watch too much aye, aye. so obviously I don't really know yet what my style's going to be aye because Chris is doing my comedy workshop start next week aye so he's going to be doing his first gig so we, we agreed at the start of this uh, podcast yep. that Chris is going to do a five minute spot and I'm going to do a gig so I, I kind of half learned the guitar a wee bit but I'm shy at it so I'm going to learn the aye. guitar and do a note mic but brilliant I'll be, be shy because I'm. I, 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 I can't sing. I, well, I could probably learn a song, but I'm not a good. I'm not a musician. Just make up a song. Aye, a aye, song. Aye, aye, but I'll, I'll, I want to do like a an old mic gig. Aye. I'm not. I'm not going to be doing the bar lads or anything. But you know, never say never. Never man. say never. <laughs> I might just maybe maybe I'll do a couple of gigs and go fucking hell I can sing. Say, we might be recording this in a year and I'll be the comedian of the podcast and you'll be the musician. Maybe I, <laughs> I, and I would just be back uh, for my residency in, in Las Vegas. <laughs> like, like like I stole Adele's gig and I, well, <laughs> Chris, I thought I'd come back and with my gold crown and all that. I'll be punting tickets for my friends. <laughs> Uh, stranger things have happened. Never know, mate. Never know. <laughs> Look at well, Billy Conley. He started out with Jerry Rafferty, didn't aye, he? And aye, aye. They, aye. They, they were doing they the both, folk music, aye, they? they both went their own way. And I think Billy Conley sometimes a wee bit down on himself about how good a player and even songwriter he is, but he's he's actually a brilliant banjo player and aye, I aye. Love, love some of his songs as well. Aye. But he always goes, Oh, Jerry went to do that, but he always said the, the storytelling in between songs just got longer and aye, longer, aye. but I love that. I think Collins very much, although Collins a brilliant musician as well, but... Oh, so that's your pal that's doing stand-up aye, now? Aye, aye, he's, de- he, out for him he's definitely got a bit of that about him where he can, you know, tell a story. Aye. And, uh, something that I like to hear for a band as well. Like that Again, it's just another form of connection. Aye. Aye. Oh, that's, that's, that, that's what it is, though. It's made a connection with an audience, isn't it? Aye. Like, like, uh, like, I don't know. Are you, are you a fan of Lewis Capaldi? Aye. aye. Like, I don't know, because musicians, I don't know. Cause I do. Uh, no, he's, so, he's, he's, he's a brilliant singer. I, I'd say that I think, like, when we're years down the line, I think right now, personally, I think he probably writes with too many sort of professional other songwriters. Right, right. And I'd love to hear just him. just him. But in a few years' time, I think a lot of, uh, do you know what, I suppose the reason he's... St- stop doing it as much than now with the Tourette's and stuff like that he's got and you know the, the again that fame the, the anxiety and I think a lot of it's fame but it's also maybe too much pressure to aye. come up with it because you're number one and aye, that's pretty much uh, what that documentary was about aye, wasn't aye. It? about the sort of pressure of he's still a young guy isn't he? He, comes, aye, aye. He, he comes across as a lovely guy aye. and you know you know he's a lovely guy he's just got a great personality but also what a singer and, I, and also, I, I would say, as a good songwriter, uh, but I'd love to see, like, in a few years' time, what music he's making once. Right, so, so do you think, right, your analysis of Lewis Capaldi is like, uh, like he got his fame quite early because he's, he's part of, he's a good singer, but his part of got no, him, but, I, do you think he's not quite matured as a musician yet? Or? No, no, I think, I think his songs are great, uh, like, that there must be something in the water in that. Aye, I, I love aye. that song, and he's a great vocalist. So I think he's got he's he's a brilliant musician and singer, 
and also really funny ah, and yeah, a great personality. Part of, right. But probably, and you know, you can only speculate, and it's maybe not right to do that in somebody's mental health. But I think the amount, of, and but I think that documentary kind of ah, spells yeah. it out. The fame. And that folk coming up all the time getting selfies aye, and, aye, aye. and he's a guy because he is a nice guy he wouldn't say no to a aye, selfie aye. but uh, I think that's but equally like what happened with Paolo Natini his first album was a bit poppier but he's, he's went on he's experimented and I suppose that's the stuff I maybe find more interesting aye. but equally the music he's making the now just making a million so aye, who, aye. who am I aye, to aye. say oh I'd, I'd rather hear your difficult number do you know three album like aye. that's just a personal I taste I don't mean like, that it's might change but, but no he's got he's got the chops and he's got the talent and ability aye. but maybe inside he, he he's not feeling that but I think aye. definitely from seeing that documentary going and writing with guys for London and LA and they're probably the folk you do need to write with to uh, get in aye. the charts but I don't think he does now. I think he's a guy that's Aye. made his own way. His fan base is there and they'll be there for him. But I think it'd be good at a point, do you know, even some of the songwriting retreats I go on, I go and write with loads of different people and oh, it's really? ordinary Aye. people, do you know? It's not like uh, some people that have got published songs, Aye. but other people that are just like, do you know, in different bands or do Aye. acoustic things. And it's a brilliant experience doing that. And Aye. it's a genuine one, whereas... It just seems a bit forced going in and have. I know what you mean. So it's like Jake Mahim is like, right, you're a big name, people love you. We want you to be a number one. This is the formula. Aye, it's become far more of a business. Aye, thing like he's record. authentic. So do you think the few years become more authentic? I think he's. That, a, I think he's authentic anyway. But I aye. think right now there's just too much pressure on him. Oh fuck! Aye, that's aye. probably why he's took a break. Aye. I want and, to see. I want, as you can say, I want to see an album from him that's just him. And it comes straight from him without. Aye. When when you hear him doing Aye. his songs acoustically, they're brilliant, Aye. and they're not like. But I suppose the the pop element to it that's what what sells, and that's Aye. what you know. Uh, but I think I, I I definitely think in a few years' time we'll be listening to a different side Aye, to him. I get that, I get that. But Aye. again, that's it, it's all about personal taste and what I like. It's not necessarily you Aye. know what the next person likes. Aye. It's. Aye. Uh, but, and I do like his songs, but I just think I it'd be good to see him with like the third album to move in a different direction. Cause I definitely think he's got that ability. Aye. But it would probably mean it's just, all it's all so far it's been aye. nobody loves me, but burned up me five other times and all that. You know. It'd be good if he went travelling or away to somewhere that folk don't know him and then maybe wrote with local musicians aye. over in take general. some acid like the Beatles did in the 60s take maybe, some acid for whatever, a couple of years whatever is that whatever. how you got your stuff in? whatever works again aye. again no comment <laughs> well that's you after right? aye well we, we come from the Spawn so aye, it's like aye. par for the course that says what it has to aye uh, so what, what have you got what, how long have we done Chris that's been ages isn't it <clears throat> aye an hour an hour and 20 is it fucking hell so what's like we'll finish up, man. So what's what's and like like so this will be out in February, won't it? Yep. So what's what's next in so your your plan for I'm world domination? We're we're writing some new tunes with right. the band. I'm doing some hunt on McMustard writing, I'm recording. Uh, so I've got I'm gonna have quite hopefully a lot of releases this year. Oh but, cool. But also there's quite a few festivals confirmed, like Belladrum, Aye. Butte Fest. Uh, there's that multiverse Crawick uh, down at the borders. Right. Lindis Farm, which is brilliant. See if they do comedy, that'd be a brilliant Aye, one for if you. you know, if you know any like, any contacts, give Aye, a shout. Because you, you do that Geordie's Jocks thing, don't Aye, you? Jocks, so, Geordie's and Aussies. Aye, Aye, so, it'd be, Aye, so it'd be good to uh, get you on there. And that's over 18, so that's the one Aye. you can let your hair down a wee Aye. bit. And, uh, but I so we've got them... I'm missing out. Oh, Mugstock as well. Right, uh, right. That's kind of uh, Paisley Way or something. It's Strath Allen. It used to be Mugdock Park, but it's Strath right. Allen. So there's about five. There's a, a couple of uh, new English ones to us that we're playing. So I'm right. excited about them. They're but busy then. I just playing festivals. I do a, a show with Colin called Born to Rewild as well. Right. Uh, we're like dressed as wolves and it's about <laughs> rewilding and... <laughs> Like, do you know, doing stuff for the environment. All oh, right, right. Uh, so, where do you so do that then? Do you do that? We, we do that usually. Uh, we do it over at Vogre Pogre, Vogre Park near Dalkeith. Right. That's where it started. But we done it at the Fringe last year. 
Uh, we've done it at many manoeuvres, but we've Aye. been one of the English festivals that's not been announced yet. They've they've booked Colonel Mustard and that show. All right. So, so did that, you do a full run of the Fringe last year? Nah, seven, seven days. Right, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think I'll. I would ever put myself. I, know, I, I respect <laughs> the people that do, oh, and, man, I, 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 and I, think, I think it's probably why you're, you know, you're as good as you are as well when you're. Or maybe it's wired to the moon, is that? Right? <laughs> but it's, there's definitely something really great about the people that can do it. But I'm never say never. Maybe Aye. in a few years' time, Aye. but seven shows was. Uh, seven. Uh, where were you? Uh, just a uh, uh, what's it called again? Boteco. So it was oh, getting, right, getting, for John, getting, uh, getting it up, Mark uh, Robertson. Mark, Mark, sorry, aye, aye. aye. So Mark's like a sort of distant relative uh, via oh, right. cousin Suzanne. Oh, right, so right, right. He'd booked his own. Mark the DJ. And it was no pressure as well. That was what was good. Like, whereas when I'd done it with a gilded balloon before, uh, ended up losing a fortune. Oh, fuck, I ever like, loses a fortune aye. with a gilded balloon. Because <laughs> you, you, could, you, could, you could, I know guys like, sold good loads of tickets and still lost, lost a few thousand. Aye, they show you how much money you've made them and it's like thousands of pounds <laughs> and it's like at the end of it, you, you owe money. <laughs> like, I know, fucking hell. <laughs> Uh, I but I, I fuck that. Finish, I, finish I, on a better note than than the clowns. I, I am, I'm looking forward to festival season and hopefully do a big Christmas gig this year I, as well. But Barrowlands again, maybe. Ma- maybe I don't know. I, uh, I'll come this time, John. Get, 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 get you a wee guest. Like, in fact, I, you could do a wee introduces or something like that get for the Woody's Bum crowd. I. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward to. We've got some good releases uh, going to be happening this year right. with, with my different acts, and I like think me and Colin will probably. Go on a wee tour, uh, we wee hunt on McMaster tour, aye, with aye. Gordy and Stevie and Gary, and uh, get out and do a few dates, well, we... some some wee venues as well. So, aye, uh, lots, excellent, what's going on? Excellent, man. Cheers, yeah. man. Um, um, where can people find you on the socials and that? Oh, aye, so aye. I uh, Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. You'll get us on all the usual sort of streaming platforms. Uh, <laughs> we're on, aye, aye. we're on Facebook. Uh, Instagram, uh, I'll, I'll link it all in the video as well. But aye, just TikTok so can... and I Twitter, although now it's X, it seems aye, aye, aye. <laughs> I don't like you. Like Musk. it? Uh, I've never nah. really used Twitter X. Aye. I have tweeted we are, we are not five that times. Great it, but it's aye. Aye, I think they're coming off it. But there's a few contacts on it that you're like, oh, that's the only aye, place aye. you've got them. So, <laughs> aye, aye, aye no, cool. that's good. So go and follow their stuff and our stuff. Aye. Sure you... Aye, and I'll be doing like this is going out in February. I'll still probably have tickets left for my Aye, comedy Glasgow festival. Comedy Festival show on the twenty third. Nice and sleazies and twenty third of what? March, March, uh, and another one a week later. Blackfriars, Blackfriars. So, so the twenty third's a Saturday afternoon, and the following Thursday night. So, uh, aye, that'll be class. Good stuff. Hopefully, see you there. I'll be there. Aye, so that's that was a that was a that was good fun. Wasn't Thanks it, Chris? for having us, lads. Yep. See you. And then we're going to take loads of heroin and acid and have a laugh. Play that banjo. <laughs> Play that banjo. <laughs> Good stuff, right? Cheers. Cheers, Good, later, good afternoon. Cheers. Thanks for coming, John. Cheers, man. Cheers, John.